Thank you for taking the time to view my presentation. At this point in time, I feel like my esoteric interests really have no significance whatsoever. But when this crisis is behind us, I hope this information proves useful. I'm Paul Bond. I'm an outreach and instruction librarian at a community college in New York State in the U.S. We're an open admissions institution offering certificates and two-year degrees. About half of our students plan to transfer to four-year colleges and universities, and the other half intends to enter the workforce. I'm also the uh, o campus OER program lead, and I've had this long-standing interest in open education. I've been researching the historical development of information literacy and open education, and I see interesting parallels. I think there are lessons to be learned from the histories, and I think some knowledge of the cycles of change and evolution can help us understand where we are and where we may be going. In exploring the literature, one common theme that shows up is control, and that's what I'd like to explore here. I think it has particular relevance in the age of big data and surveillance and algorithms. I should acknowledge at the outset that my view is very US-centric. Like many of my people, I have a bit of a cultural myopia. Um, I wanted to take this talk to the UK because I think there is much that I could learn from having conversations there. And I fear there is a bit of impracticality in my interests and efforts. As a librarian, I want to help our students be able to leverage the information environment to continue to learn and grow as self-directed, independent, lifelong learners. But the reality of my day-to-day -day job involves a lot of uh, printer and computer maintenance so students can get their assignments done. But it's our ambitions and aspirations that keep us going forward. Our friend Norman here is a bot from the Star Trek TV show from the 60s. His aspiration was to protect and serve humankind by keeping them amused and happy and thereby controlling their unpredictable nature. Norman offered a dystopia wrapped in a utopia, and yes, I like heavy-handed metaphors. But the idea of artificial intelligence making choices for people and influencing their decisions isn't so sci-fi anymore, much less than at the end of the 60s. So what does this mean in terms of open education and information literacy? Open education has had shifting connotations over the years, from the 60s and 70s to today, from open classrooms to open admissions to open access to OER to open practices and open pedagogy. There are connecting threads that run throughout, though, particularly in the aims to increase access to education and in increasing learner agency within educational systems. By learner agency, I'm referring to the level of power and control that learners are able to exercise. Peterson wrote of open education and lifelong learning back in 1972, stating that the aims of education are to enable people to better understand, modify, and enjoy their environments. And it is a problem that schools tend to focus on the first, whereas young people tend to be more interested in the other two, to modify and enjoy their environments. When institutions exercise this kind of control, focus on what is relevant to the institution rather than the learner, it can alienate students from education. When students have a say in their learning, the benefits of education can be much more readily apparent. Resnick, also writing in 1972, used learner control as the defining criterion of open education, saying that the primary aim was to find ways of developing the full range of each individual's cap capacities while putting control of the learning process as much as possible in the hands of the learner. Putting control in the hands of the learner requires helping them develop learning skills, teaching students how to learn. As she put it, the more that individuals can organize bodies of knowledge, search texts and other presentations for useful information, and analyze new skills in order to program their own acquisition sequences, the more they will be able to learn independently of organized programs and skilled teachers. Note that what is described here are examples of information literacy skills, like open education. Information literacy has evolved as a concept over the years. While Resnick described it in 1972, it was not until two years later that the term was coined by Paul Zerkowski. Zerkowski coined the term information literacy in 1974. He was not in the education field, rather a lawyer concerned with intellectual property. 
But he saw that we were moving into an information age, and he thought that if the United States was to remain economically competitive, its people would need information skills. So he advocated for a national program to develop information literacy. His original article may look a little weird today uh, because the concept was just starting to be developed. But he had a key statement in the middle of it that said that the value of information lies in the control it provides us over what we are and what we can be. His perspective is one of economics, business, and consumers rather than education. But I see in that statement an implication of transformation, what we are and what we can be, a transformation that occurs through education. And I think in our current environment, we could rephrase Zerkowski. Information has value in direct proportion to the control it provides the collector over what society is and can become. Zerkowski recognized the need for some control over the information environment. Still looking at it from an economic perspective, he felt it needed some regulation, similar to what we have for the financial realm. He noted that this was no small thing, as he put it. America needs a plan for the information age on the scale of the effort that we made to put men on the moon. Understanding who controls information, or the information environment, is an important part of information literacy. Zerkowski saw that control shifting over the 60s and 70s, when both the information industry and the computer services industry were engaged in creating an information equivalent or counterpart of all events, artifacts, and people of human existence, past, present, and future, as he put it. Today we call that big data and surveillance. I really doubt that he was thinking about them on the scale that we have today, but he did see an ethical issue with this. There is an ethical component to information literacy. Most often it's framed in terms of plagiarism and piracy, as in the old ACR standards for information literacy. But the current ACRL framework puts it in a threshold concept, information has value, and begins to recognize issues of power and influence. It says, legal and socioeconomic interests influence information production and dissemination. Experts understand that value may be wielded by powerful interests in ways that marginalize certain voices. The difference as I see it is the framework is aspirational, where the standards were aimed for practicality. And I think there's a historical lesson here in the tension between aspirations and practicality. The open ed movement of the 70s had high ambitions, but systems of education also have practical needs. Um, Roland Bo Barth wrote a postmodem on the movement, and he wrote that open ed started from a general philosophy about learning held by some practitioners and became a marketing label applied to products pushed by vendors. But the practice has to proceed from the philosophy. Where it didn't, it was not effective. As information literacy developed as a concept, it became codified into the ACRL standards which gave us a practical way to teach and assess, but also presented a diminished vision, I think. Returning to Peterson's aims of education, to understand, modify, and enjoy, the standards gave a model focused on the first element, where the other two are more compelling, and the framework aims to be more ambitious. Open Ed in the United States today is very much focused on OER, free textbooks, pushing product. It's very practical but not as compelling as it could be. Many people like me in the library profession are drawn to OER as a way to help our students, but it's not empowering OER. It's not empowering in the way that open ed or info lit can be. So back to ethics. Zarkowski called upon librarians to lead by example almost 40 years ago. He said, this new context calls for a new ethical order. The ability to manipulate all these information counterparts of people requires that whoever does the manipulation must respect the privacy of the individual and provide individuals the time, to, time and space to live and grow and to become. He was primarily concerned with the protection of intellectual property, but he saw ethical concerns with privacy and information complexity, which refers to misinformation and disinformation of the sort we frequently see shared on social media these days. While these issues are very current, they've also been with us for a very long time. 25 years ago, 
at the dawn of the information age, the web age, Shapiro and Hughes addressed the issue of practicality versus aspiration in arguing for information literacy as a liberal art, that information literacy is not about making people effective consumers of information, but rather about enabling people to live as free human beings in the information age. That information literacy goes hand in hand with democratizing education. And that such an extended notion of information literacy is essential to the future of democracy if citizens are to be intelligent shapers of information society rather than its pawns. That's an ambitious and aspirational view of information literacy. The goal of democratizing education is shared by the open education movement. The goal of empowering learners is shared by both movements. There's a mutual dependency as well. Engaging in open educational practices requires information skills. Information literacy can be effectively developed, is perhaps most effectively developed through open practices, through students producing learning artifacts. And we can learn from each other's learning this way. Yet there seems to be a disconnect. I look at the Cape Town Open Education Declaration. It says, they are planting, they are also planting the seeds of a new pedagogy where educators and learners create, shape, and evolve knowledge together, deepening their skills and understanding as they go. And I see information literacy underpinning the ambitions of Cape Town Plus 10, yet only mentioned in the form of digital literacy, and then only in passing as skills that they say educators tend to lack. Can we make the connections among open education and information literacy more explicit? We're interested in the care in open education. We care about how working in the open can impact and affect students. We care about what it can do for students. We care that students can manage and control their online presence and identity. That's part of information literacy right there. And our students care too. The recent Project Information Literacy Report on Information Literacy in the Age of Algorithms reports on the students' attitudes towards privacy, targeted advertising, and surveillance. They don't like it. They find it creepy. They look for ways to resist it. But they also feel resigned to it. It's out of their control. They also don't think we are helping. And the faculty interviewed for this report concur. They think that the information literacies that students need in, an, in the algorithmic environment are important, but they think someone else should be covering them. It's just not practical for them. But they are knowledge and skills we should aspire to make part of education as much as possible. Our friend Janet, Miss Jackson if you're nasty, declared her emancipation in her 1986 anthem, Control and claimed her right to make up her own mind, to make her own decisions, and to lead her own life. That theme of control has always been present in open education. It's always been part of information literacy. It's an ethical issue that we care about, and one that our students care about deeply. To be citizens and shapers of information society rather than its politics.